Okay, so we just got a new SawStop 5 horsepower industrial cabinet saw. Now there's a five step process that I always go through whether it's a new saw or new to me used saw. Uh, it's really important to check a few things. One for safety because what, ha what can happen is if a saw is bumped or jostled during shipping or you know whether you pick it up from somebody's house on Craigslist and you're loading your truck and it gets bumped around, it can create some unsafe uh, situations where if the, the blade is misaligned and also just quality of use and cut. You know, you can get a lot of burning and uh, really it feels like your saw is working way too hard on rip cuts or cross cuts if it's set up incorrectly. So there's a quick five step process I always go through and check. Now you're gonna see, you know, a new high quality saw like this isn't really gonna have much issues, but I did do an amazing in-depth table saw tune-up video here where we went through my old saw stop top to bottom and went through and adjusted all the features. You can check that out right here in the left corner. I'm gonna show you some quick tips and tricks for doing this and what to check. Uh, and if you find that you're having issues, I would definitely go watch that full length video. Uh, so let's get into it. Now the two most critical things, which are mostly for safety, but also for high quality of cut, you know, sometimes you'll see that you're getting burning and there's no reason you should be. Uh, that can be because your blade is turned inwards and it's causing a pinching motion as, a, as you do rip cuts. And so what is really important first is that we make sure that our blade is aligned to our miter slot. Now, every saw is gonna be different how this is done. Uh, cabinet saws versus contractor saws are gonna be different, but all of them can be adjusted except maybe the cheapest of saws and I'm sure you can find ways to bump them over. But on all cabinet saws, the cast iron top, the part in the middle, usually there's two wings on the outside, but the cast iron part can be turned this way and that way, whereas the blade and the motor and all that stuff is gonna remain stationary. So what we need to do is measure this, and then after that, we know that the blade is parallel to our miter slot, then all we need to do is check that our fence is parallel to our miter slot. Now I have a very easy way of doing this that doesn't need a test dial indicator. What I like to do is I just use a combo square, and I use one tooth on my saw blade, and I'll just make a mark so I know which one that is. And I like it to be one where the, the set of the tooth is pointing this way. So actually, we're not gonna use that one. Uh, we're gonna use this one here. And what you wanna do is you're gonna hand spin it backwards because you don't wanna go forwards because when you come in contact with your square, the tooth could bite into it. But if you're going the other way, it's not. It's gonna just rub past it. So what I do is I take my saw tooth that we marked, which is this one here, and I'm gonna put it at the front part of my cut, take my combo square, and I'm gonna rest it against it. Now I have a piece of wood in my miter slot and you notice mine has play, it doesn't matter. You just wanna make sure you know it's the same thickness and because when I press up against it, just like that against the tooth, it's gonna be pushed against the miter slot and I can lock my square in and I know that is exactly even with my tooth. And so when I rotate backwards, you almost feel it just barely come in contact with that square. Then we're gonna take that tooth and we're gonna rotate it to the back of the cut. And we're gonna put our square right here, and I can feel that that's just barely in contact, and it feels the same way as the front, and it looks the same way as the front, so I know that my blade is perfect. But if I wasn't getting perfect, I would get more contact. It would be like a much rougher sound. It would feel like it really rubbed the square a lot more, even pushed it away from the block, and that's, that's gonna be okay if you're getting more turn this way. It's when it doesn't touch it that you're in trouble because that means that it's pinched this way. In fact, some people, I've heard Rob Cosman say that he points his saw out this way about a thou um, because that way only the front part of the blade is cutting and then the back is not coming in contact with your freshly cut piece. Um, but that's just a matter of preference. If it's pointed out this way to the left of your fence, you're gonna be okay. Um, and I can feel here that I'm getting the exact same contact that I am here in the front. But if I wasn't, what I would do is go underneath the saw here. Uh, there's a couple bolts and you'll find it in whatever your manual is. And you're gonna adjust those and it shims your table back and forth. But now that we know our blade is even with our miter slots, now we're gonna check our fence. Now we wanna make sure that our fence is aligned with our miter slot. We're basically gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna take my square. I've got my fence locked in. You wanna make sure it's not loose. So I'm gonna take my square, push it up against my fence just barely coming in contact, and I did that by setting it against the fence before I tightened it down. And you wanna make sure you don't tilt your square, that it's nice and flat. And then the same thing, you move to the back here, and you wanna make sure that there's no play in there. Uh, if you want, you can take a feeler gauge and take like the smallest one and make sure that it's not fitting into your miter slot. So I know that my fence is perfectly aligned, but let me show you what you would do if it wasn't. So as you can see here, most of these 
T-fences that are on nice cabinet saws uh, have these adjustments and then contractor saws will have different ones as well. But you can see there's an Allen bolt here. So what it does is it pushes this guard out, which is what presses against the steel tube here. When you lock it in, this will push it in and out. And what that'll do is it'll change the way that your fence sits when you lock it in. And it's very easy to adjust that. So speaking of the fence, the next thing we want to do is make sure that it's square to the table up and down. Okay, so the way I check this, now for me, only this side of my fence is important to me because I never have my fence on the other side of the blade. But if you're somebody who puts your fence on the other side of the blade, uh, it's gonna be a little bit harder to shim both sides differently if for some reason they're off differently. But for me, I'm only worried about this side. And as you can see, my fence is not square. So I'm holding my light behind it here. And you can see there's much more light up at top here uh, than there is at the bottom. And this is a very easy thing to fix. So uh, let me show you, come around back here and I'm gonna show you how this is done. So on most fences uh, on these types of saws, there's gonna be these adjustment nuts on either side of the fence. And this raises this side or vice versa, will raise or lower the other side. Now I can tell by looking at them that this one is higher than the one on the right. So I think if I just lower this, I'll be able to get my fence perfectly square. In fact, yep, there it goes. Now that is perfect. I'm gonna lock it down just to make sure. Um, and when you're doing this, something you want to do on the center part of the cast iron, you can go out to the wings, but those may be slightly off for some reason. Maybe they're not tightened down all the way or they were bent at some point while moving. So if you do it on the center cast iron, that's going to be the most reliable to your blade. Um, and once you get that square, you should be good. I've lowered this one to the perfect amount. I'm just going to check the other side of my fence just in case. That one's looking good too. So those are the most important things to check for alignment. The next thing you wanna set is your 45 and 90 degree stops. And this just makes your life way easier down the road. When you go to just make cuts, you know when your saw bottoms out on either the 45 or the 90, that it's dead perfect and you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so I've set this all the way to my 90 degree stop and it's, it's dead on. I'm gonna show you where the adjustment nuts are. Um, but it's really important that you watch where you measure. Uh, this is also a point where a small engineer's square can come in really handy. But come around here, let me just show you a little trick. So when you measure this, you wanna make sure that you're in between two teeth. Uh, because these teeth are welded on, they stick out further than the blade. So you wanna make sure you're not coming in contact with the tooth while you're measuring this, and it doesn't impact where your square is. Um, if you have a square that's shorter than your blade, like a small engineer square smaller than this one, um, you can do it too, but you wanna just be right in between two teeth and that's gonna make sure that you get a really accurate measurement. So we just checked the 45 degree also on, so not that exciting, but you can see right here, that is the stop for the 45 degree. Saw stop very nicely makes those yellow bolts and you can see all the adjustment bolts in the bottom of a saw stop if you have one are yellow. Um, but this is the 45 degree stop and this is the 90 degree stop here, which is also a yellow bolt. Okay, so those are the five things you really need to check when you get a new or new to you used saw in your shop. Again, if you're having issues, check out this in-depth table saw tune-up where I go through the cleaning process. If you maybe just wanna check on your saw because uh, you haven't tuned it up in a while, it's a really good video to watch because it really makes a big difference. Uh, guys, thanks for watching. If you wanna support the channel, head on over to the Cats Moses store. It's linked below and uh, pick up a Dovetail Jig, a stop blocker, a t-shirt. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.